Hi, this is Lily Cotilla, and welcome to San Diego Therapy. This segment has to do with the sixth sense, that of humor, and introducing it into your relationship, in particular where there are frictional areas. And humor can take many different forms. The more tangible the form, the more memorable the message, the vision, the more memorable in the future when a similar scenario may present itself such that the behavior actually changes and the outcome resulting in friction on top of friction and then referencing past friction and problems doesn't spiral you out of control. The sixth sense of humor and manifesting something external that is not in talk words, it really stands out in the mind of an individual. It's almost hypnotic. When a cow is branded, seared, and has a mark left on the body, It's almost a similar concept, except for that it's psychological uh, in origin. I'm going to give you an example. Let's say a relationship dyad gets into the cycle of, I'm going to break up with you, we're done, we're over. An individual might come to an agreement with his partner that every time you do this, I'm going to send you a text card, let's say the King of Hearts. And when you've done this three times, the third King of Hearts that you receive, you turn in and then it's almost like a reward is given. It's equivalent to cash. Maybe the person gets a massage, maybe for an hour, maybe the person... um, takes the individual for an evening outing that is more unique. Whatever is agreed upon. Well, that's not really humor, but that is an external method that is tangible, that is visible, where you don't get stuck in the words and you move into solution of decreasing the problematic behavior while increasing the successful behavior resulting in cohesion of partners in a relationship. Something with humor might be if, well, the hard thing is when you're stuck in emotions that aren't funny and that are of anger or sadness, it is hard to access humor. But if you think about humorous possibilities while not swallowed by the emotion, you can have more easy access to them. If your partner is sitting on the couch all the time and has his or her head buried in Facebook and doesn't want to really communicate with you and you feel like she's having a relationship with Facebook, you might literally print out the Facebook icon and sit there right next to her and tape it to your face and just, you know, stare in her direction and look at her with this Facebook replica taped to your face. Maybe she'll get the message, maybe she won't. And if she doesn't, that's okay. Eventually it will lead to one direction or another of whether or not the relationship works. But what you're doing for yourself is you're bringing humor into your body and you're decreasing the intensity and the aggravation around the scenario, regardless of whether or not she ever changes. Let me think of another example here. Okay, if somebody's always checking up on you and checking in on you, checking in on you, and it's annoying and you feel this vibration in your body, well, what do chickens do? They lay eggs, right? Meanwhile, you feel like you're walking on eggshells anyway. You might literally 
the next time you're being checked up on, take an egg, not with anger, like throw it at the wall as if it were a baseball, third to first throw or something like that. But you just take the egg and plop, let it drop on the floor and smash to pieces. And there you have all the eggshells that you are walking on. Look, I got flagged on my face. (laughs) Um, And it's an external way, a branding way, that the person, the next time he or she tries to go to the habituated behavior, has a much higher, increased likelihood of remembering that external tangible, visceral image and literally change the behavior. And as we all know, changing behavior that has become habituated over the years, even if we cognitively know it is not good for us individually or the relationship is hard to do. So these externalized things that can be quite funny if you allow them to be or perhaps you're addicted to anger, can really be beneficial for not only you, but for the relationship. Oh, I just thought of one more. If your partner drinks a lot and you're always on his case, and let's say you are the partner whose case is on by drinking a lot, in the old days with the I Love Lucy, she would stamp on grapes, as I recall, in this kind of winery barrel and so symbolically when the nagging quote quote which she doesn't or he doesn't want to be doing anyway about the drinking sits in you might have some purple grapes ready in the fridge and although it's pretty wild you put them out on the floor and start stomping away Literally as if you're an eight-year-old and making a point regarding, you know, enough commentary about the smashed grapes and try and put an end to that before it turns the relationship into a raisin. Okay, with that said, try out these various techniques and or more and more examples will follow soon.